Blood concrete. Imagine building a base on Mars using materials harvested from your own body. While it might sound like science fiction, researchers are discovering that human bodily fluids, including blood, urea, and tears, could be the surprising key to constructing habitats on other worlds. These experiments were undertaken due to the monumental costs and logistical complications involved with delivering materials to other planets, with one 2017 report estimating that it may cost as much as $2 million to transport a single brick to Mars. Particularly aimed at constructing homes for colonists on the Moon and Mars, a series of experiments has found it possible to create concrete-like substances from surprising sources. One engineer said that his team had, quote, been trying to develop viable technologies to produce concrete-like materials on the surface of Mars, but we never stopped to think that the answer might be inside us all along. Fascinatingly, these bizarre experiments have a precedent. In the Middle Ages, animal blood was often used to bind mortar for construction. Similarly, modern methods can use human blood or other secretions to bind regolith, the name given to the loose top layer of rubble on these barren planets. An additional study found that by incorporating human urea into the mix, the resulting concrete had more plastic-like qualities, making it less brittle and enabling it to flex. This potentially world-changing innovation, which has a substantially higher compressive strength than regular earthly concrete, has been dubbed astrocrete. It's even been shown that similar biocomposite materials could be 3D printed. Early estimates predict that over two years, just six humans could produce enough materials to make half a ton of concrete. Ongoing studies will continue to refine and test astrocrete to see whether it can withstand the harsh environments in which it would be used while determining whether such long-term plasma donation would harm the astronauts. It seems that the development of these materials may one day give a whole new meaning to the term Red Planet. Self-Replicating Radiation Shield Rising from the ashes of the Chernobyl catastrophe and thriving in one of Earth's most hostile environments, a remarkable fungus has been discovered as part of a mold growing inside the decimated nuclear reactor that may hold the secret to safer space travel. Space's vast emptiness is not as empty as we think. Its invisible threat, radiation, endangers astronauts daily. With no planetary atmosphere as a shield, human travelers through space and colonists on other worlds would be subjected to massive, fatal doses of radiation. But what if this Chernobyl-born fungus, with its unique ability to absorb high radiation levels, could be humanity's shield in the cosmos? Imagine a future where interstellar travelers and extraterrestrial settlers have a biological armor against space's deadliest elements. Researchers behind the ongoing radiotrophic fungus studies have suggested that one day in the future, spacecraft and structures on other planets could be shielded by a layer of it. In 2018, a sample of the fungus was transported to the International Space Station for further testing. The study took place over 26 days and found that a fully mature layer of the fungus, just 1.7 millimeters thick, prevented around 0.84% of radiation from passing through. Furthermore, the unusual fungus experienced a 21% growth advantage in space, demonstrating that it could prove useful in reducing ionizing radiation and that the fungus is apparently already well adapted to the environment. Theoretically, a layer of the fungus 21 centimeters thick could protect humans from radiation on the Martian surface, thereby overcoming one major hurdle of space colonization. Additionally, being a living organism, this radiation shield would be capable of adapting and regenerating itself as needed. Other experiments in the field of microarchitecture have been undertaken by NASA, including the formation of bricks and furniture from fungi, mycelium, and waste. It is hoped that these will enable the habitation of distant planets without us having to transport all the necessary materials to a new world. Research is ongoing, and there are several challenges to overcome, including the logistics of growing the fungus in an isolated wall to protect it from the cold temperatures of Mars. But the results so far are promising. All-Female Crew As NASA sets its sights on Mars with a planned landing by 2040, a provocative debate is taking center stage. Should the first crew to step on the Red Planet be all women? Space exploration, traditionally a male-dominated field, might be in for a groundbreaking shift. 
women, studies suggest, could have distinct advantages for interplanetary travel. For starters, their typically lower consumption of resources means spacecraft could be lighter and carry fewer supplies, critical for enduring the long voyage to Mars. Being generally smaller in stature, women typically consume 29% less oxygen, produce less CO2, consume 18% less water, and eat 26% fewer calories. In the vast expanse of space, where every resource counts, these differences aren't just minor details. They could mean the difference between success and setback in our Martian saga. Secondly, there are psychological advantages to sending an all-female crew. Considering these astronauts will need to live in close quarters for up to three years, there are likely to be interpersonal conflicts from time to time. Studies show that women are less likely to have confrontational approaches to resolving these differences. One researcher wrote that, quote, numerous sociological studies have shown that women in general are more cooperative and less given to hierarchical social structures. These factors combined would allow for a smaller ship and therefore a more cost-effective mission. Over a single mission, this may make a spacecraft literally tons lighter and around $160 million cheaper. This approach is a continuation of discussions that have been occurring since the 1950s. Considering that the title astronaut could not technically be applied to women until 1983, the possibility of an all-female crew could be a rebalancing of the scales. However, some have claimed that the calculations behind these conclusions are outdated and that modern technological leaps have made their implications less significant while suggesting that a diverse crew would be the most representative solution for humanity. Space Food Imagine eating a delicacy made from human waste. Welcome to the future of space cuisine. With every ounce of resource being invaluable in the void of space, even what we leave behind becomes a precious commodity. NASA is in a race against time, with a Mars mission on the horizon and a journey that could last three years, they're grappling with a food challenge. Currently, astronaut meals on the International Space Station expire after 18 months. A trailblazing team has unlocked a method using microbial reactors to transform both solid and liquid human waste into a fertile ground for growing food. But here's where it gets weird. Treated with the right microbes, this waste might become a direct source of nutrition. One professor of geosciences on the research team said, quote, It's a little strange, but the concept would be a little bit like Marmite or Vegemite, where you're eating a smear of microbial goo. While this may sound revolting to many, recycling waste into food may reduce the mass of long-flight vehicles substantially, reducing the amount of fuel required for the journey. In order to design a device that could process waste into safe matter for direct or indirect consumption, the researchers drew inspiration from the human digestive system as well as existing sewage treatment systems. The recycling of human waste in space is not a novel idea. It's been explored in various forms over the years, both in scientific research and science fiction literature. Examples of other space food concepts that have been successfully created on Earth include a protein shake and a form of yeast that can be made into pasta or tortillas, both created from recycled astronaut breath. Others include a burger grown from a nutritious fungus 3D printable proteins, and a machine that can turn CO2 into vodka. It remains to be seen what NASA's approach to sustaining the manned mission to Mars will be, but it's unlikely to be very appealing. Artificial Gravity, Haven 1 The concept of artificial gravity has long been a staple of science fiction, but few people are aware of the real dangers of living without gravity. Spending more than a year without the forces of gravity can cause a person substantial muscle loss, bone loss, retina issues, and even brain damage. The latter is caused by fluid-filled cavities known as ventricles, expanding by 11 to 25%, putting pressure on other regions of the brain. This occurs due to changes in pressure, and it can take more than three years for individuals' brains to return to their original state after returning to Earth. In some gravity studies, the loss of bone density and cognitive issues have been measured by restricting test subjects to their beds for weeks at a time and requiring them to carry out various tasks in this position. Because of the risks and issues associated with zero-gravity environments, artificial gravity is crucial to long-term space travel and an ever more important subject of research. 
Recent developments in the field have led Elon Musk's SpaceX to partner with the aerospace company Vast to establish Haven 1. This commercial space station is due to launch in late 2025. Haven 1 will be the location of the first ever spinning artificial gravity system on a commercial space station. The spinning structure is intended to create a centrifugal force that will push objects outwards, imitating the effects of gravity. NASA had previously considered a comparable system, known as the Centrifuge Accommodation Module, but its development was cancelled in 2005 due to budgetary constraints. While still largely theoretical, the development of artificial gravity systems, like those planned for the upcoming Haven 1 launch, illustrates how today's science is turning science fiction into reality. Which of these developments do you think is most likely to be used for long-term space travel? Let me know in the comments. As always, thank you for watching Dark 5. Like and subscribe to continue exploring the greatest mysteries of this world and beyond.